declared the public health emergency of international concern over the global monkeypox outbreak. It really is a calling together of all the countries in the world. The virus has been detected in all but two states. More than 7,000 cases have now been confirmed across the U.S. Monkeypox isn't a new virus, and this isn't the first outbreak in the United States. Monkeypox vaccine distributed here in the U.S. more than tripled. They became, at worst, excruciatingly painful, and at best, um, mildly irritating. We have a window of time right now, a small window to stop this virus from becoming endemic to our homes. So what do you do about it? And how do you stay safe? I've enlisted the help of a local infectious disease doctor helping to stop the spread of the monkeypox virus. My name is Philip Chan. I'm an infectious disease physician at Brown University, and also chief medical officer at Open Door Health. And first, I wanna show you how we got here and just why there is so much stigma attached to this infection. I'll lead this discussion in saying that my partner Brian and I got vaccinated last week for monkeypox. That's right, no monkeying around over here. We felt that's the safest option for us based on our lives, our potential exposures, and that this was the best idea moving forward. So far, no adverse effects, and we're due for our second dose in a couple of weeks. We've administered almost a couple hundred vaccines here at Open Door Health. In general, this vaccine, the Genios vaccine, is very well tolerated. We think it's uh, very effective as well. I say think because there's just such limited data, again, about monkeypox. There's never been an outbreak to this scale of monkeypox. We're still learning a lot about it. All right, now let's get down to business with a quick history lesson. Laboratory monkeys in Denmark were first detected to have this virus, an orthopox virus, and wham, bam, boom, monkeypox virus was coined. The virus has largely been contained to Central and West African countries since the 1970s, with outbreaks occurring in the Congo and Nigeria and nearby countries for decades. It wasn't until 2003 that the virus made its way to the United States for the first time. So what caused this 2003 outbreak? Did some monkeys get loose and catch a red eye over to the United States and start infecting everyone? No, not exactly. And in fact, science isn't 100% sure who the true host or reservoir is for this virus. So what caused the O3 outbreak? Prairie dogs. Frickin' prairie dogs. These cute little dudes infected over 70 people in the United States after a shipment came over here from West Africa. And back in 2006, a pretty well-known medical journal, the Journal of Infectious Diseases, wrote about their findings and published them. Of the 47 individuals that they studied, 22 were male and 25 were female. So can a virus determine your sexual orientation and infect you based on that? No. No, it cannot. And I wanna dive into some of the data from this paper because it strongly correlates with what we're seeing with this current epidemic. I promise it's not boring and there's no bananas involved. And I wanna start by reading the excerpt from this paper. There were no instances of human to human transmissions. Persons who became infected with monkeypox virus were exposed to sick prairie dogs in different settings and by means of very different types of contact. Some individuals were bitten, many reported handling the animals without being bitten, and some reported only being in the same room with the sick prairie dogs. This is suggesting that monkeypox virus infections may have been initiated in different persons by means of different mechanisms. This includes percutaneous, or through the skin, inhalation, or mucocutaneous, such as the nose and the mouth. And looking at some of the symptoms for these people, we see that the time course of their symptoms and the severity is slightly dependent on the type of exposure they had. And this is something we're actually seeing with the current outbreak of monkeypox. We've seen a very diverse set of symptoms. So some people uh, are presenting with what's known as a program, meaning they feel a little bit sick in the beginning, fever, uh, muscle aches, not feeling well, and then they develop into the rash. And the rash has really been all over the place. Sometimes it's on the face, sometimes it's in the mouth, sometimes it's actually on the inside of the rectum or around the genitalia. So we're seeing a very diverse presentation of this. And certainly if anyone has a rash that looks pustular, like a, a, a small set of pimples, that should be concerning for monkeypox. We can see from this study that more complex exposures, oh, and by complex exposures we mean some sort of break in the skin, whether the prairie dog dude bit their handler or scratched their handler, some sort of break in the skin. And non-complex exposures were just handling them or being in the same room as them. And notably about these non-complex or more non-invasive transmission routes and correlating it with the current epidemic, 
we're seeing that with some household items that you can share the virus as well. Things like bedding, linen, clothing, people that have monkeypox and you know, are, are wearing clothing or, or sleeping in beds. Uh, and then if someone else comes along and touches that or rubs that on their skin. So for the most part, we do believe it's transmitted through skin to skin contact, through real intimate contact, like sex, uh, but it can probably be transmitted through some of these other routes as well. And in this journal article, we see that for the more complex exposures, that there was an earlier onset of the rash and a longer duration of the fever, and also the first symptoms that they experienced, this graph here, was more likely to be gastrointestinal in nature, things like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, or the characteristic lesions. Although, as we see in the current epidemic, sometimes these lesions can look like some other sexually transmitted infections as well. So I had this one person specifically that I was convinced had monkeypox, right? It looked just like the pictures that we see, it turned out actually to be herpes. So I think there is some overlap of symptoms between some of, some of the other STIs, like herpes, potentially like syphilis, uh, and I think that physicians and other providers just need to be aware about that. Of course, pause the video to study this picture further, and I will link this paper in the video description below, but a few reasons why I'm sharing all this data. First, to show you that there's research on this virus. It's not a novel thing like COVID-19 was. Second, to share that the symptoms and overall severity can be different based on your type of exposure. Thirdly, to show you that women can get the virus too, and we've been seeing this in news reports lately. This isn't just a gay male thing, this is a human thing. And fourth, to show that nobody died during this outbreak. And finally, to share that this has been in the United States before, and it's been contained. We have a small window of time right now to stop it from becoming endemic to our home and our land. It was easy for us to stop the 2003 prairie dog to person transmissions. We just got rid of the prairie dogs. But with this current outbreak, with the person to person transmissions, I mean, they're no joke. One thing that's really different from monkeypox uh, compared to COVID is that we know in COVID is that people can transmit COVID when they don't have symptoms. So they can be asymptomatic. We think with monkeypox that you have to be have symptoms in order to transmit it. And we aren't seeing a huge number of cases. We're seeing a number of cases, uh, but certainly if monkeypox were easily transmitted, certainly if it were transmitted through droplets, uh, uh, then we would be seeing many more cases. So it appears to be transmitted through intimate sexual contact, uh, which is why we're seeing a lot of people with rashes around their genitalia. And what if we start seeing this virus spread into non-prairie dog dogs? Things like your pets, your dogs, your cats, your hamsters and gerbils and squirrels, whatever. Then they become another source of this infection, which they can possibly transmit it to humans. And it can quickly become endemic if it finds the right host. But as my partner Brian and I shared earlier, there are vaccines available out there. And don't, don't throw that banana at me again. And you'll be happy to know that this type of virus and this vaccine are a bit different than COVID-19. There's always going to be a risk of any of these viruses mutating to become uh, to become more virulent, to become more infectious, etc. I think one key difference though with these orthopox viruses like monkeypox or like smallpox is that they're DNA viruses. That means that they're going to mutate less rapidly, they're going to be more stable, and that's different than things like SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID. It's different than viruses like HIV. So I'm actually optimistic that we're not going to see uh, this virus mutate into variants like we are seeing for COVID. It's just a different, a different virus. The harsh truth is yes, it's primarily affecting men who have sex with men, and that's simply because these types of people tend to hang out with similar types of people in similar social circles and sexual networks, and therefore the spread is far more likely amongst like individuals. Right now, I think it's important that we monitor ourselves for any of the signs or symptoms that we discussed today. And that if you have any new skin lesions that you go get it checked out. Don't expose others and get tested if some of this stuff is going on. And listen, I'm not here to sex shame, but think about how you can reduce your own risk. What activities are worth participating in right now and what is just simply too risky? And on the flip side, don't shame others for the activities that they're engaging in. That's their decision just like you made health decisions for your own good. 
but it is wise to modify your behaviors, at least just for a short while, so that this doesn't become a longer issue. And I think at this time, given what we're seeing with monkeypox, people may want to consider to temporarily cut back on their partners or adjust their behaviors uh, to reduce their risk. But that's a decision that everyone has to make for themselves. Just because we have these vaccines and antivirals doesn't mean that you should throw caution to the wind. Check in with a friend who might be struggling with monkeypox. It can be incredibly isolating and I'm sure that they could use a smile or a banana. Too soon, too soon. I think with any emerging public health concern with new recommendations and new information coming out daily, it can be confusing, it can be polarizing and it can be downright scary. And I think as people have asked, you know, what should we be doing? What should we be doing uh, for public health? What should we be doing personally? You know, I'm very sex positive. I've been in the sexual health field for a long time, huge advocate of PrEP, uh, take care of a lot of folks. Uh, and at the end of the day, my stance on this, is just that people need to be aware. People need to be educated about, for example, what monkeypox is, uh, what's my risk of other STIs, and then people are gonna make their, their own decisions about what to do. Let's be smart right now. The monkey, you see what I did there? To overcoming this is to reduce risk and get vaccinated. And if that doesn't appeal to you, well, in the video description, there's gonna be some links where you can educate yourself and read up on the symptoms of monkeypox and anything else that you might need. Uh, big thank you to Dr. Chan with Open Door Health for sharing his expertise in this video. I really encourage you guys to comment down below if you've had monkeypox or the vaccine or the antivirals, whatever your experience is, I'd love to hear it if you'd like to share it. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to live your life out loud.